Hey there, it's Oishi, and I want to go through the books, movies, TV, and music that made up this month for me. Yes, I realize this is basically a wrap-up, but I'm gonna call it that's a wrap, because I guess I'm just not like other girls. Okay, let's do it. Le Petit Prince was a fun little read. I finished reading this for French class this month, and I would be lying if I said that I wasn't in a state of emotional turmoil afterwards. I really analyzed this thing so hard for the tests, but it was worth it since I did pretty well on them. Solid four stars. And then I finished up my reread of the Harry Potter series with Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and The Deathly Hallows. Order of the Phoenix is my least favorite book of the series, mostly because Harry is astronomically annoying in it. He's constantly angry or brooding or self-pitying, not to mention that it's basically his fault that one of the best characters is missing in action, to put it lightly. Also, Umbridge exists. On the flip side, Half-Blood Prince is one of my favorites of the series. Delving into Voldemort's past is always so interesting, and there's romance in the air, which is always fun. Deathly Hallows ripped my heart out like it always does. I basically read the last half of this book in one day and cried way too many times. Needless to say, I was emotionally exhausted by the end of it. Five out of five to each of these because it's Harry Potter and it's been ingrained in me for longer than I can remember and giving it anything less would be sacrilegious. <laughs> The Death of Stalin has been on my list ever since it came out. I thought it was pretty fun. It's always nice to see serious things treated with a lighter hand, and to really see just how ridiculous and messed up the Stalin rule was. That being said, I was kind of expecting more from it in terms of humor. Everyone I've seen talking about it said it was hilarious, and I didn't think so. It was definitely funny, but I was just expecting a bit more. So three and a half stars. I watched the half of it twice this month, once at the very beginning of the month and again at the end of the month because I was working on a video about it, which is out now, so link in the description. I thought this was really cute, it's definitely one of the better coming of age films and definitely one of the better Netflix originals. We get that Asian and LGBTQ representation, which is always a good thing. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars and I recommend it if you're looking for a sweet little watch. Speaking of sweet little watches, I rewatched 8th grade. This movie is so good. It somehow manages to perfectly encapsulate what 8th grade is like in terms of the teachers, the other kids, and just how you feel in general. It's also refreshing to see 8th graders played by actual 8th graders. 4 to 5 stars to this. The Greatest Showman was really fun. I'm a sucker for period pieces and musicals, so this movie really did it for me. I didn't really connect with the score as much as I have with other musicals, but it was still fun. My favorite musical numbers were Rewrite the Stars, cause damn that choreo, and The Other Side because it's a bar scene, and bar scenes are the superior breed of scene. This is me really hit, and so did Never Enough. Yeah, fun movie, three and a half stars. And then I watched Swiped. My friend and I have started alternating watching bad and good movies together, and this was our first bad movie, and I don't even know what to say. I've seen lots of videos on this movie and everybody talks about how bad it is, and I just thought to myself, it can't be that bad, can it? And the answer is yes, it really is that bad. Half a star, though I don't know if it even deserves that much. Zombieland was my next movie. This was another rewatch in preparation for Double Tap, and I mean, it's still fun. Woody Harrelson is batshit crazy like he seems to be in most of his films I've seen, Jesse Eisenberg doesn't play a complete asshole, Emma Stone's killing zombies is my entire sexuality, three and a half stars, and I added the half star because the writers had the audacity to make Woody Harrelson's motivation throughout this whole movie be getting a Twinkie, and that is the most daring thing I've ever seen. The Kissing Booth was our second bad movie, and it was definitely a step up from Swiped. Many steps up, in fact. It was really cringy and had Wattpad dripping all over it, but hey, I was actually invested, which is a hell of a lot more than I can say for Swiped, which is why I've ordained it with two stars. I liked Zombie Double Tap just the tiniest bit less than the original. It's still a fun ride, but I don't know, it just didn't hit the same. Although I will say that that one-shot Elvis fight scene was fantastic and made my day. Also, Bill Murray fighting zombies. Three stars. Another Jesse Eisenberg movie, I watched Now You See Me. I have to say that I thought the plot of this movie was going to be something along the lines of magicians working their way to fame, but holy moly was I wrong. I was kind of confused for a lot of it, but maybe that's because I'm just dumb. Three stars, it's enjoyable for what it is. Tall Girl is dumb. I don't really have anything else to say about it. It's not as terrible as Swiped, so one and a half stars. And then I started my Harry Potter rewatch. 
I actually watched the extended Blu-ray version of Philosopher's Stone, or rather Sorcerer's Stone, because that was the only version I could find online, and yes, that is unacceptable. And I don't know, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I normally do. Maybe it was because I know this film so well that it was jarring to have these new scenes thrown in. Eh, I don't know, three and a half stars. Chamber of Secrets is arguably the worst Potter movie, and yet I still love it. Yes, it's very long, yes, the pacing is kind of awkward, yes, Hermione isn't in like half of it, but it's also got Dobby and Jason Isaacs and some killer improvised lines, so all is forgiven. Three stars. Prisoner of Azkaban is out here doing the most. I love this movie with all my heart. Not only is it one of my favorite plots from the series, but it's just gorgeous to look at. It's got Daniel Radcliffe looking more like Harry Potter than he ever has and ever will. It's got Remus and Sirius. It's got Buckbeat. It's everything. Really, my only problem with this movie is that there's no real explanation as to who the Marauders are, and also that freeze frame, because that is just so weird. Other than that, it's perfect. Four and a half out of five freaking stars. Goblet of Fire was my last movie of the month. Basically, Cedric deserved better. I bawl every time seeing Amos's reaction. Also, there's this. All right, you put your name in the cupboard of fire. Yeah, cool. Four stars. <laughs> Extracurricular was my first ever K drama. For a long time, I thought K dramas meant soap opera, and so I never watched one. Not that there's anything wrong with soap operas; they're just really not for me. But I found out that K drama is just used to refer to any show that comes out of Korea, and I'm just like, why did no one tell me that earlier? Anyway, Extracurricular was a time. I'm pretty into gritty crime dramas, so this show was right up my alley. It was a lot slower than I expected it to be, though. Episodes 1 through 6 were like a slow burn, steady climb in conflict and drama, and then episodes 7 to 10 were just insane. So really the pacing was my only problem, and even that it wasn't that big of a deal. 4 stars. And then I started watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's pretty funny, I was having a good time, although I've been sort of put off of watching it in light of recent events. I got to the end of season 3 before watching it started to really make me feel icky, so I've decided I'm gonna set it down. Who knows, maybe I'll come back to it one day, but as of now, thinking of watching a show about cops puts a bad taste in my mouth. Glass Animals released their song and announced their album Dreamland, and I cannot be more excited. Glass Animals is one of my favorite bands, and I'm just so stoked we're finally getting new stuff. This song is gorgeous, I instantly fell in love with it, and the music video is so cool. The lead singer Dave Bailey made it all by himself in quarantine, which is honestly so impressive, I highly recommend checking it out. I've also been obsessed with the piece The Belt of Faith from Parasite. It's the piece used in the Peach montage. If you know, you know. When I first heard it, I thought it was an actual classical piece, before I found out that it was made by a modern composer named Jung Jae-il. I really hope I'm saying that right, but I'm probably not. I'm so sorry. This is my favorite performance of it ever. Please go watch this because it's incredible. Speaking of classical music, I've been really jamming to my classical music playlist. I've got a ton of really famous pieces as well as some more less known ones, courtesy of Two Set Violin, who I love. I'll also leave them in the description down below, although you probably already know about them because they're just awesome. For me, classical music is both helpful and distracting to do work to. It's helpful because a lot of the time it can be really calming, but then other times it's just absolutely chaotic, and that's honestly why I love it. And finally, I've been listening to The Greatest Showman OST. My favorites have been on repeat, it's been a fun time. I'll leave all of the music I mentioned linked in the description if you want to go check it out. And that's it! That was my month in books, movies, TV, and music. Let me know some of the stuff you've indulged in this month. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Alright, you put your name in a couple of the fire.